When we go through times of uncertainty, it often affects our thinking and even our emotions. So in today's episode of Daily Renewal, we're going to talk about the fact that the Bible points out that the times that we're in right now are not times to be discouraged, but this is a time where we should be excited. Hello everybody, this is Pastor Lyle and welcome to Daily Renewal. Uh, If this is your first time tuning in with us, just want to ask you to consider becoming a subscriber to our channel. And just a reminder, uh, the, uh, the biggest thing you can do to help us with our channel is to like and share these videos with anybody that you think that they will help. Uh, we've got over 200 episodes of Daily Renewal that are all designed to help you in your Christian walk. It always amazes me uh, to observe how some people handle what they consider uncertain times. You know, uh, since I've been alive, uh, the, the period that we're living in right now, for a lot of people, would be considered a very, uh, considered a very uncertain time. There's so many things going on around the world. And, you know, as a, a Christian, it's through uncertain times that a lot of people are going to be able to observe uh, you know, our walk with God just by how we respond to things. You know, I want to talk today about what was looked at as probably one of, if not the most uncertain time uh, up until now, because I do believe that there's even more uncertain times to come for some. But as a believer, I just want to uh, give you a little bit of a heads up. When, when uh, it looks like the most uncertain time, these are the times when God makes a way for those who call upon his name to have a certainty, to be able to walk with a certainty because Jesus is coming soon. But as much as uh, Jesus himself said that, you know, over 2,000 years ago, there was a time that I'm going to speak about today, uh, and that was the time uh, when we uh, look at his, uh, his death, his burial, his resurrection, and his ascension into heaven was a very short period of time where there was a lot of emotions that were going on through a lot of people's minds and hearts because it was very uncertain for many people. And I want to talk about that today because I think that that's going to help us put some of the things that we're going through right now into perspective. So we're going to take a look at the book of Luke today. If you have your Bibles with you, uh, open up to uh, the, uh, the book of Luke, chapter 24, And we see here, we're going to start reading from um, verse 13. And this is the story of uh, two men that are on the road to Emmaus. Now, Emmaus, it says here that they were, uh, that that, uh, it was seven miles. And uh, I, I... I think that there might be some discrepancies depending on translations here, but that's not the, the, what I want to key on today. Uh, it's, it talks about the fact that it was seven miles away from Jerusalem. Now, Jerusalem was where all of this stuff took place. You know, that burial uh, or death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. This all happened in Jerusalem. So these guys were, were out of town. They were uh, heading to this place called Emmaus. It says here in verse 13, it says, Now behold, two of them, were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. Again, they're talking about all the things that had happened about, with Jesus. And apparently it was very well known throughout the territory. So it was, while they conversed and reasoned, that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Uh, but, they, but their eyes were estranged, so that they did not know him. So Jesus had already uh, had gone through the process of dying on the cross. He was buried and he had, had uh, uh, risen from the tomb. But it says here that for some reason they did not recognize him. And so Jesus in verse 17, he says to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? Now, this is interesting because, first of all, you know, I think you know, when we look at, at Jesus asking this question, he's basically saying, okay, you guys, I want to ask you, what, what's going on here? 
and we're going to get into to their their explanation. But but before we get into that, the first thing that I want you to realize is is that Jesus walks up and acknowledges that they are sad. So we have some people here that um, we don't know exactly how close they were to Jesus, but they were obviously followers of him, as you're you know as we can uh, uh, can see from the story. But they're very confused about what's going on, and as a result. You can see that that from their countenance that they are sad. And we also have to realize that Jesus, um, it's not that he doesn't know what's going on. It's he wants to see what their take is on what is happening in their culture. What's happening with all the things that are being talked about. And because he wants to reveal to them that really they've got nothing to be sad about. So, so first of all, we've established these guys are sad, believers that are sad. And so from there, when we start reading from verse 18, and I encourage you to read this on your own because I'm going to just kind of show you a little bit about what was going on here. From that point, verse 18 to, uh, to 24, they begin to, you know, they're kind of surprised that Jesus doesn't know. It's almost like, I'll paraphrase it, if I was to use today's vernacular, they would, they'd be answering Jesus by saying, hey, Jesus, like, uh, I, hey, we don't know who you are, buddy, but are you hit, you've been hiding under a rock? Like, do you not know what's going on? It was very well known what happened. And so they go through this whole confusing time about how their leaders delivered Jesus up. It didn't make any sense because they were pretty sure he was the Messiah. And, uh, and, and then they said something else that I thought was really interesting in verse 24. And it's very important that we understand this. And, and then in, 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 in this dialogue of explaining to Jesus what had been going on, they said this, and certain of those who were with us, so they were obviously with the disciples at the time, uh, certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. Now the women went to the tomb uh, when the stone was rolled away and Jesus uh, resurrected. You know, they went to the tomb and found out that, that he was no longer in the tomb, that he was no longer dead, but Jesus was alive. So they reported back to the disciples, and this is what they're talking about here in the story. It says that, that these women found, uh, that, that what these women had said, it had been true, uh, that they went to the tomb, but him they did not see. So I guess what the key thing is that I want to point out in this part of the story is, is here's you've you've got some believers that uh, that are, are are relaying the exact true story about what happened to Jesus, and they are sad. And you know, I look at at uh, at our our uh, our culture today, the Christian culture today, the church today, and it absolutely amazes me. How you know, I'll go online and I'll see some of these preachers, or I'll talk to some of the the men and women in, that I've known in ministry for a long time, and and it's like there's if there isn't a panic, then there's this anger, there's this urgency that you know we need to do something because it's getting so bad and and the persecution's so bad and we need to change something, we need to stand up for our rights, and I see all of these things that are going on, that if we look at it. There's, and, and, there, and the countenance on a lot of the people, it's either an anger or a sadness or just this, this almost like, you know, we don't know what we're going to do. You know, I think it's a lot like what was going on in this story. Because if we really, if we read what, what Jesus says is going to happen, both to the Christian church and to the world as a whole before his return then we should probably be excited about what's going on. And, and that's, that's the interesting part about what happens here is, is it's very well known, or it's seen here that these guys, if anyone, they shouldn't have been sad, but they should have taken up these signs as being something that would confirm that they were on the verge of seeing probably, or of seeing the, the one of the two greatest moments in history. 
And that was, they were about to, to uh, truly understand the, the uh, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, which, which would confirm he's exactly who he said he was, and exactly who the scriptures beforehand had prophesied that he was, that he was the coming Messiah. Now, the second event is the event that right now I believe we're the, on the verge of, and we see a pattern repeating itself right here. We see a lot of believers whose countenance are sad because things just seem to be tough. We seem to be going through all these tough situations and all this Christian persecution. And let me just stop for a moment and say this. I've heard a lot of people say, oh, you know, we're, you know, we're going through persecution. I really believe that the Christian church is going to go through even more persecution, especially in the West, than what we're currently seeing. Now, we, anybody that's watched Daily Renewal knows that I, I spend time looking, and I know people that are involved with the church around the world, and real persecution is happening around the world. A persecution that's far beyond what the Western church has, has experienced. You know, there's people that are really, uh, they're uh, um, uh, losing their lives for the faith. And in fact, there's been more persecution upon the Christian church in the past five years than there has been in the entire history of Christianity combined. So that's an indication that we are in the last days. But I'm going to say this, that for the Christians in the, in the West that really believe we're going through persecution right now, and that, that are finding it tough right now, they, I really believe that we have no idea how bad, uh, how much worse this is going to get. But praise God, if we are able to see this properly, this is not a time to be sad. This is a time to be excited. And I'm here to remind you today, just like Jesus reminded uh, the disciples, or these two disciples on the road to Emmaus in their day, uh, that, that there's something great that they are not seeing. And if we don't see things from God's perspective, it will affect your countenance. And, and, and it's really important that we understand this because, you know, as the world watches us, you know, the ones that really should have a revelation of what God's doing is the church, God's people. And it, it, one of the things that has just really um, uh, kind of bothered me lately, I guess is the way you can put it, is, and, and I guess it bothered me in some ways, but in, the, in, uh, in some ways it's, it, uh, I won't say it's encouraging. I'll just explain what I'm talking about. If there's ever a time where, where the people of God need to hear from God, it's right now. And with all of the, these lockdowns and, and different adjustments that are going on, I mean, in my city, uh, in, in British Columbia, Canada, you know, they, they, uh, last week they, they said that you know, the, the churches are going to meet, be able to meet for, for four weeks or whatever because you know, it was come up to, a, to, to the Easter season where all the churches want to meet. And they said, you know what, you guys are going to be able to meet. And, and then all of a sudden, right before all this was to happen, you know, some there were some adjustments in some of the things that are going on around the world, uh, and and they the government shut it down again and said, no, there's absolutely no meeting. You can't even go to restaurants. And and I see a lot of these church leaders. It was almost like somebody punched them in the gut. You know, it's just like, oh, we got deflated because you know once again our rights were violated. My thought on that is. Why can't we pray and ask the Lord what, what to do and how to do it? And, 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 and the fact that, that often the church just doesn't seem to know how to respond properly, to me is an indication that we need to get on our knees, figuratively, and, and talk to God and find out. How are we supposed to run church? How are we supposed to do this? Because obviously there's a way to do this where, uh, where our countenance isn't always affected by how the government or how people make decisions. You know, we should be able to walk with God in such a way where we can always have joy. And, and that's why I think this message is important. We can't be looking at circumstances, whether you're a church leader, whether you're a, just a, a Christian that sits, that consider yourself just a, a guy that goes to church. Understand that this is an exciting time. There, this is, there's no reason at all to let our countenance get to the point where it's low. And, and also remember this, that when we do allow our countenance to get to the point like these guys, when they were sad and yet they were on the verge of one of the biggest breakthroughs in history, it can also affect those who are observing you, maybe who aren't believers yet. You know, we have to uh, rely on the Lord 
to sustain us. Rely on the Lord to, to help us have a countenance that is, is full of joy. So anyway, let's continue. So Jesus here, after hearing their take on what's going on, and, and, and he, he, we look at verse 25, and here's his response. He says, Oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And then he begins to talk to them about all the things that were spoken to them that they knew about, all the stories about what the prophets had said about the coming Messiah. And he painted the picture to them so that in, in hopes that it could, it could, uh, they could still see all the things that they had seen, uh, that they knew, uh, they knew that were going to happen, but they, he wanted them to see that they were right about all of the things that they saw, but they were wrong in how they perceived them. You know, as I look at all the things we're going through right now, it can be looked at as being absolutely horrific and a tough time, a, a, a very disturbing time. You know, you know what, what's God doing in all of this? And that's what would have been happening here. There was a lot of confusion as to who Jesus was, even those who thought he was the Messiah, like these guys. A lot of confusion. There was a lot of things happening in the world around them. It was challenging even their own thoughts of what the Messiah was going to look like. But as Jesus began to, to show them that, that the things that they had learned were actually coming to pass, that they could be excited about this, he showed them in the scriptures. And, and, and as he's talking to them, they found themselves, rather than, than, than you know just continue talking about what was going on, they began to just listen to what was happening, and on the inside, something began to happen. And it talks about the fact that as they, as as he spoke, and it says this in verse thirty-two. It says, "Yeah, uh, that uh, well, in verse thirty-one, their eyes were opened, and they they knew him, and he vanished from their sight." So this this event happens where all of a sudden, as he's talking, they realize that this is Jesus. This is happening exactly the way that he says it was. Sorry if I'm getting excited, but I am excited about this topic. And, and, and so, so he vanishes from them and they say this. They said to one another, verse 32, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened up the scriptures to us? See, this is really important, friend. When we look at all of these things, we can be excited about all the things that are going on right now because they are confirmation that really, as I mentioned earlier, I mentioned the two exciting times. The second one, the most exciting time in history, and I don't put the two in order, is the return of Jesus Christ. And these guys, their hearts burned within them because Jesus uh, helped them see from the scriptures at what time period they're in. And my hope is today that you that the Lord will help you to understand that there's scriptures that point to the fact that we are right on the verge of the return of Jesus. And that's something worth being excited about. So from there, I want to talk to you today. There's three things that I really want you to focus on that are going to help you with this, uh, digesting this, so you can be excited as well. And it's, it's how they responded to this. Because I think it was really important to understand. Uh, first of all, the first thing that I want to talk about is this. Is they really did listen to Jesus. When we're going through times that really seem to be unsettling, you know, a lot of times what we want to do, even in our prayer life, is we, we complain, we get upset, and, and we want to tell Jesus how we feel. And, uh, you know, it's times like that that, you know, that often we spend more time talking, or should I say more time complaining. And if you find yourself in that position where you, you, you know, you don't really understand what's happening and it's beginning to affect you, the biggest lesson or one of the biggest lessons we can learn from this situation is these guys, you know, as Jesus began to talk, what they did is they invited Jesus to spend more time with them. They wanted to hear more. And, you know, we really have to get to the point where when, when we're in situations like this, we have to want to hear, God, what do you have to say about all this? And then from there, we have to get to the point where we close our mouths, and, I, and that might not just be a physical thing, 
but a, 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 a point in our life where we want to do, uh, want to make the shift into hearing from God more than just wanting to tell God how we feel. You know, God knows how we feel. He knows the thoughts and intents of your heart. He knows when you're sad. He knows when you're angry. He knows when you're sad or happy. He knows all the emotions that we are going through with all these things. And, you know, it's his desire for us to be able to walk in joy through all situations. You know, when Jesus was hanging on the cross and he knew he was going to die for our sins, you know, he himself, at the most excruciating time in his physical life here on earth, you know, it said it was for the joy that was set before him that he was able to endure the cross. And he wants us to be able to see beyond this situation right now so that we would have a joy that is set before us so that we would be able to endure. He makes that available to us. He wants us to know what is ahead. Because as we go through this uncertain time, we have to know that there is a time of certainty. There's a certainty of his coming, a certainty that we will be with him in eternity. If we just continue to call upon him and trust in him, rely upon him, believe on him. And so we see here, it says that their hearts were burning within them as, as he talked. And uh, that means that you know, they allowed him to speak. You've got to make the time, make it a priority to just hear God. Again, not talk, but listen. What is God saying about these things? Again, I, I believe that's part of the answer for, especially for pastors going through this time, because I'm going to tell you something that I find very, uh, very troubling, is if pastors don't know what's going on, and if pastors' countenances are not in the right place, pastor, if you're listening, I'm speaking to you, then it's not because God doesn't want you to know. No, we need to spend the time so that when we hear from God, we'll have a better idea on how to respond properly. A lot of people are looking at church today, and they're looking at, at believers on how to respond. And if we don't hear from God on how to respond, then it's, it, you know, it, it affects how other people think they can hear from God. You know, we have to make the effort. Lord, what are you saying? Speak to me. I don't want to make a move without hearing from you. That's how I look at a lot of these things. We can't panic. We have to get to the place where we go, you know, Lord, I know you want to want to show me what's happening. So I want to position myself to, to be able to hear. And that, that lines up with the second part that I think that we need to be aware of today. And that has to do with how you position yourself. Now, listen to what happened here. Right after this situation where their hearts burning within them, in verse 33, it says, So they rose up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven and those who were, uh, who were with them gathered together. Now, I, I want to just I'll tell you a little bit why this is important. It says that very hour they returned to Jerusalem. That's a pretty big deal. No, but and I'm going to get into that in just a moment. But the first thing that was uh, the big deal about it was the fact that they understood that they were in the wrong place. You know, if you're in a place where where your countenance is sad, you're in the place where um, where where you uh, you know you're just not not hearing from God the way that you want to hear. You have to make the decision to go back to where you know you're supposed to be. Now, that might not necessarily be a physical place, but so, so let, let me expand on that a little bit. If you find yourself in a place where it's very confusing, the best thing you can do is do the things that you know uh, that, you, you, uh, that, that God has set out uh, for you to do to be able to be in the right place. Starts with repentance. You know, if you know that you've gone astray in areas of your life, and that doesn't just mean that, you know, all of a sudden, you know, I've quit following Jesus totally and I backslid horribly and now I got to find my way back to God. Now, this might just be little things in your life that used to be sharp in your life and your walk with God that have been dulled down, that, that maybe been worn down because of situations. 
you know, for me as a believer, I find there's oftentimes where, where God will just kind of stop me and say, you know what, you, you, you're, you're going a little bit on, on the side on some of these situations. You're not as sharp as, as, as you once were about maybe prayer or, or you know, you're not enjoying uh, or you're not spending the time in the Word. Not that, that, that it, not like God saying you have to spend time in the Word. But, you know, there's times where I find that maybe I've uh, let my attention go on to other things. Because here's what I find. When, when it comes to reading the Word, for example, I love the Bible. I love reading the Word. But there is times where, especially when there's uh, issues going on, you know, we try to self-medicate. We want to watch a movie. We want to do something else. The last thing you want to do is, is, is uh, read the Word of God. Well, I know myself, after doing this for many years, even as a pastor, that, my, that, that God brings life to me when I read His Word, when the Holy Spirit speaks to me through His Word. But there's an, we have an enemy that tries to keep us from doing the things that will bring vitality to our walk. And so when I find myself, you know, creeping off to the side on some things, you know, I, I, I make the decision. I discipline myself to get into the Word. Again, not because God's commanding me to do it. But when I discipline myself, I sit down and I start to read the Word of God. I, I, you know, when I ask the Lord to reveal things to me, it amazes me how I never regret it. You know, even as I sat down today and, you know, I had some ideas about what I wanted to talk about. I had a, you know, a passage that I wanted to talk about today. When I started getting into it, I started to realize just how, how, how come I got into it, why I had this, this passage brewing in my mind or in my heart. The Lord started to reveal to me some things that I hadn't seen before. But it's only by me disciplining myself and putting myself in the position where God could speak to me that allowed him to speak, allowed me to hear, and it built up my countenance. So again, if you're in the position, these guys were in the position where really God was trying to get them back to Jerusalem. And the reason why, and you can see this when you read in the, uh, the early part of the book of Acts, uh, both in Acts 1.8 and uh, 2, 1-4, to Jesus wanted his people the ones that had been following, the close ones, he wanted them to be in Jerusalem because it's from there that he talks about in, in Acts 1 and Acts 2 about how he wanted to do them with power from on high. And that's what when uh, the day of Pentecost came and the baptism of the Holy Spirit came upon his believers, he wanted these guys here to be, to be in Jerusalem so that they could experience that. So there was another level in their Christian experience that he wanted them to experience. But, but, uh, but in order for them to experience that, they had to be in Jerusalem. He wanted them to be in Jerusalem for that to be able to happen. I really believe that that's why he was urging them back there. Um, you know, because there's strong indication of that. Now, the inter inter uh, interesting part about that is the way that they responded, these guys knew that they were supposed to be in Jerusalem. So again, this was a physical place because God wanted to do something spiritually. But we have to understand that what I'm talking about here, it might be a physical place. Maybe you're in a place where you know that you're not supposed to be. That's great. Then, then you need to return there. But, but also spiritually, if we are in a place spiritually where we know we're not supposed to be, we have to make the decision to get back to the place. And this is how you get back to that place is you make decisions that, w that you know that God has shown you in Scripture that will help you be able to get back to that place. Now, some of those things might be, you know, going to church, if you're able to go to church, if your church isn't shut down, you know, uh, watching YouTubes like this, you know, uh, YouTubes that are, that are going to encourage you spiritually, uh, might be uh, fellowshipping with a, another Christian brother or sister, uh, could be, you know, that, that God's been talking to you about, you know, your prayer life, that you need to spend, spend time in prayer, uh, you know, taking communion, you know, the things that you know that God has set out, out in his word, uh, you know, and if you're not sure of those things, watch some more episodes of Daily Renewal. I talk about a lot of those things uh, if you're new to the faith. But you know what? 
the Holy Spirit will speak to you about doing things that are going to enable you uh, or so that he can direct you back to the place where you're supposed to be so that you can experience everything that God has for you to experience. He wants you get to get or wants to get you to that place where you can truly walk in the fullness of joy and not be shaken by all the things that are going on in this world. And that leaves me with my last point today. And, and we see this again in verse 33. It says, So they rose up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem. Now, when should you do this? You should do this as soon as possible. You should do this as soon as as soon as this uh, as session of daily renewal is done. If God has put something on your heart, put it into action immediately. Now, I want to show you how big a deal this was. These guys, let's not forget, is it was becoming evening, and you can see this uh, when you start reading from uh, verses 28 to 31. It was evening when they were talking with Jesus, and they realized that Jesus was going to continue on his travels, and they decided to say, hey, Jesus, why don't you come in and stay with us because it's evening? You know, traveling in the evening uh, in this uh, in this area, uh, uh, in uh, this age, was, was a dangerous pop proposition. So they invited Jesus in because they, you know, were trying to be nice to him. That was the, 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 the Christian thing to do, I guess you could say. Well, at that point, the church hadn't been established, but that's the right thing to do. And so they bring him in uh, because of all this potential danger, all these things that, are, that could happen. And so here they are. They have this experience with Jesus. And right after they have this experience where they hear from God, as it, again, it says in verse 33, listen to this, it says, so they rose up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem. They realized that they were in the wrong place, that they were going the wrong direction. And, and even though it would be a dangerous time to go, it was at nighttime, it, oh, even though it was the worst possible time in the natural to go, they realized there was something inside them that said, we cannot wait. We need to move immediately, within the hour. We don't care how dangerous it is. Dangerous it's, it is. Our absolute life being depends on us getting back to Jerusalem. And you know, I know a lot of people that don't have that kind of urgency when it comes to the walk with God. It doesn't matter where you are in your walk with God, whether you're a new believer, whether you've been doing this for a while, whether you're in full-time ministry, whether you've been a pastor all, or a, a preacher all your life or a Christian all your life or what you think uh, all your life, born and, uh, born and raised in the church. There has to be an urgency. There's got to be times in our lives where we recognize you know, the, where we're at and be willing not only to repent of some of the, the, the things that we're doing or repent of and, and, and want to get back to where we need to be, there has to be an urgency to do it. You know, for me, that's something that I, I, I relish in my life is I want to be somebody that God, when you say move, I'll use an expression, when God says, says jump, I say how high and where would you like me to land, sir? You know, I, I don't want to be somebody that hesitates when God says move. And, uh, you know, I, 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 my prayer for you today is that no matter, no matter where you're at, if you're in a situation where, it's, where you know, things just aren't, aren't making sense to you, where maybe uh, some of the things that are going on in the world are starting to catch up to you, you know what? Spend time with the Lord. Allow Him to speak to, to you when He reveals things to you with an urgency. Respond with everything you have and, and go to the place, get to the place where you allow God to, to, uh, to do a great work in your life so that you can truly be a light rather than be uh, someone maybe that is uh, affecting the, the situations around you in a negative way. Because if our countenance is low as a believer... We're not going to affect anybody. It's just like that light on a hill that's hidden under a bushel where God says he wants, he reminds us that we are the light of the world and we're not supposed to hide that light. And you know, when times are tough, we have to go to him and allow him to shine his light through us so that others would be able to see him and see that Jesus is the answer even through what many consider uncertain times. Well, I hope you got something out of that today. If you did, I just want to encourage you uh, to like and share these videos or this particular session with as many people as you think that, that it'll help. 
Once again, I look forward to our next session of Daily Renewal. But until then, God bless you and have a great day.